So I suppose the word skeletal was used because it shows the essential underlying structure of these organic molecules. So here are some examples of skeletal structures. And these two are indeed the only two molecules that make you actually happy. All right, let's kick off with butane. And that's kind of tedious to draw that out in full, especially since you wouldn't even get a point unless you put in the hydrogens. You'll be docked one in the exam. So to show the skeleton, can I just draw a straight line? It's hard to judge, though, how many carbons are actually in that straight line. I would never know there were four. But don't forget butane's actually a zigzag molecule. Lots of tetrahedra put together, 109 and a half degrees. And so that's the, uh, the method that was adopted. So how many carbons here? Well, just add them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Ah, so that's going to be heptane. C7H16. Now notice that the hydrogens are missing. So you're going to have to put them in yourself, which can get increasingly complicated as we go along. So what about this molecule? Again, it might help to actually draw in the carbons. And you can see that that is a... Butane is the longest chain. And on the second and the third carbons, there's a methyl group. So 2,3-dimethylbutane. What about these two? That's propene. You can see how the double bond is shown. And butene. Well, actually, that's transbutene because the uh, bonds are across from each other. The methyl bonds are across from each other. A bit trickier. Now, it's tempted to think there are more than five carbons there, but they are not. There are only five. So that is 2,3-difluoropentane. And it's tempted to think that there's an extra carbon at the end, but there really isn't. There's only two carbons. So that's ethanoic acid. So how many carbons in these ones? Pause the video and have a think. Just two in that top one. That's ethine and just two in that one. It looks like someone lying down, but that molecule is actually propanol, has three carbons. Twelve for hexamethylbenzene, and that's penguinone. How many carbons there? Ten. Well, this seems pretty easy, Professor Thornley. <clears throat> How hard could this get? Well, this is about the hardest question that they've been uh, asking of you historically. First off, write down all of the elements and do the easy ones. I just see one sulfur, couple of nitrogens, four oxygens. Now that benzene ring has six carbons. It could also have a ring inside it. There's two ways to show benzene. And totting all those up, I'm gonna get 16. Now what about the hydrogens? Oh, let me just check Wikipedia. Is it 16 carbons? Yes. Alrighty. So the hydrogens are the tricky ones. Notice that that carbon has three bonds. Carbon's supposed to have four bonds. So there must be a hydrogen on there to make the fourth bond. And so on, all the way round. Now what about where it's branching off? There are one, two, three, four bonds there already. Ah, there's no hydrogen on that carbon. Two on that one. This carbon has one, two, three, four bonds. No more hydrogens needed. That nitrogen, nitrogen has three bonds, so I need to add a hydrogen there. 
Let's check this nitrogen. That nitrogen has three bonds. That's fine, no more hydrogens needed. Sulfur behaves like oxygen, only two bonds. That's good. And these two cheeky methyls, they need hydrogens. And don't forget the only hydrogen that's actually written right there. That's right. Smash it. So since there's only one sulfur, you can't make the formula any simpler, and it is its own empirical formula.